Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I have been asked to narrate a few incidents from the life of Hazrat Haji Muhammad Din Tehalvi Darvesh Qadian. He was my father. He accepted Ahmadiyyat in 1903 when Hazrat Misir Maudullah Salatu Wasalam took a journey to Jhelum. He was only 21 year when he took his bath. When he arrived in Jhelum, Hazrat Misir Maudullah Salatu Wasalam was there in connection with the civil case that was filed against him. So he was at that time sitting in the lawn of the court in Jhelum. When my father arrived there, he saw the back of Hazrat Misir Maudullah Salatu Wasalam. And just by seeing the back, he realized, he was convinced that this man cannot be a liar or a fabricator as generally propagated by his opponents. So when he had the opportunity, he took the bath and he was so moved by the presence of Hazrat Misiyah Maudullah Wasalam that he pledged to himself that from that moment on, he will sacrifice whatever he could, including his life. And he proved that during next 60 years, as long as he lived. Soon after he accepted Ahmadiyyat, the persecution started. But the persecution Ahmadiyyat reached its height in 1930s when Ataullah Shah Bukhari, a renowned opponent of Ahmadiyyat, made some fiery speeches in Tehal and in the surrounding area and instigated people to kill the Ahmadis. So as a result, about a few hundred young men from neighboring, neighboring villages gathered and they came to Tihal to kill Haji Saab, Hadrat, Hadrat Haji Muhammad in Darvesh Qadian, my father, and the other Ahmadis in Tihal. When the young men heard that the people are coming to kill them. They advised Haji Saab that we should retreat to nearby hills, but Haji Saab refused to retreat. However, he allowed the young man to go to villages to avoid bloodshed, and he stood there all by himself. When the crowd came, they surrounded him and took him towards Nanamdi Mosque, which was on the hill. While he was going to the mosque, he asked the permission of the leader if he could go to his house for a few, for a couple of minutes. They allowed him and he went there and he told his wife, our mother, that this is the plan of the opponents. They want to kill me today and you should be, you should know that. You should know the, what's coming, what's the consequence. At that time, she had only three children. They were all very young and she didn't think of the children. She didn't think of anything. When my father, Haji Saab, dis disclosed that that's going to happen. She said, don't worry about the children and don't worry about myself. I beseech you that don't show your back to the opponents. So Haji Saab went to the mosque. They beat him up and they harassed him. And whatever they could do, they did. They, they could kill him. A man appeared there in white dress and my father says he was nothing but an angel and he was very forceful person and very influential and he made a short speech and told these people that this is an innocent man, you should not have no business with him, just let him go. And with these words, all the people dispersed and let Haji Saab go. There are many other incidents from the life of Haji Saab. I'll just quote one more. Uh, during the Shudhi movement, again in the 30s, Hazrat Muslim asked him to go and work in the, against the Shudhi movement in Malkana, the UP, and Haji Saab also gave his time there. When he was there, the Hindus who were forcefully converting the Muslim to Hinduism, they decided to kill him and they sent a man to kill him. When the man arrived, Haji Saab was offering his prayer. Haji Saab noticed that this man was circling around with a knife in his hand but he finished his prayer, and when he finished the prayer, this man came to him and put his dagger on the ground and told Haji Saab that the people of the village had told me that you are a very bad person and I should kill him, kill you. 
But what I see is you are a very pious man, you are a very simple man, and I don't see any reason to kill you. So he went back, impressed by Haji Saab's uh, worship and prayer and his appearance. Let me add here that after the partition, Hazrat Muslim Maud handpicked some people to live in Qadiyan. Uh, there were 36 people, and Haji Saab was one of them. And this was in 1948. So he went with the caravan of 36 people to Qadiyan, and he lived there till 1965 when he died. So what he had pledged at the time of uh, his bath to the Muslim of the Islam, that he will give his life and dedicate himself for the Ahmadiyyas for the rest of the lives, he proved till the last moment.